What does the four year cycle tell us about the next bull run? When will it start and what can we expect? Let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay guys, welcome to the channel. Thank you for tuning into today's video. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. We're here to discuss Bitcoin in relation to the macro charts, the four year cycle. Is Bitcoin looking bullish enough to start another bull run? Could we potentially see a rejection from 28 to 30,000 and how that short term price action is looking? We have so much to talk about today, guys. So go ahead and stick around to the end of today's video. We're covering market data, technical data, structural analysis, and even the traditional markets. You can find us on Telegram. That will be the second link down below. You'll get access to our charts, our updates, our videos, our analysis, our educational posts, news events, news data, and so much more in here, guys. You can also find us on our VIP channel. If you are interested in trading signals, you can join our VIP where you'll get access to our exclusive group chat and our main trading channel. All the information can be found within that pinned comment and of course our trading track record within this link here. Let's get into the video guys. We'll start off with the market data as per usual. So currently for the month, Bitcoin has defied odds and pushed up 17.39%. Again, a lot of this was triggered by the Federal Reserve announcing that they were gonna bail out the banks and actually printing 300 billion dollars in the last couple days guys as you can see by this chart here you can see the total assets held by the feds you can see guys that we had a 300 billion dollar increase here and that eliminated over six months of qt so quite intense guys are definitely not holding back over here they're really making it very obvious that they're going to bail out the banks and they're going to be quite happy printing money to do so and obviously we discussed the implications of that in another video, but we won't get into it too much today. So 17.39% for the month of March, we can see volume is down 31.94% over here, um, over the weekend. Again, that is expected. We're at 105 billion. Liquidations is down 45 or 42.5% 42 to 133 million. Again, over the weekend, we do expect volume, liquidity, all that kind of stuff to dry up a little bit. So it's not too out of the ordinary. We can see that the long and short ratio is 48 to 51. So we are starting to see some shorts stack into the market. If we look at the volatility over the 60 day period, we're at 296. And we look at the 30 day period, we are at 34. Again, continuing on the rise. Looking at the liquidations over the last 24 hours, we have seen a decent amount of spread between longs and shorts. Obviously, a whole heap of longs got liquidated on that crazy week towards the downside we had not too long ago, a pretty large drop, I'm gonna zoom up on it, right over here, we saw in a 10 minute candle, we saw a three or 2.5% move towards the downside, liquidating a lot of longs. Anyway guys, let's go ahead and talk about the broader market. So DXY is very much at support here, bouncing from the 103, 103.5 zone. Again, it's gonna be very interesting this week to see where the DXY moves, particularly on the back burn of FOMC, which is going to be occurring in just four days. Remember, FOMC, they're really, really important this month, guys. are gonna determine whether or not the narrative in the market, which is the Feds are going to pivot, is going to hold through, and the actions based on the interest rate hike will reflect that, or whether or not their interest rate hike will basically be in contradiction to what their decisions and announcements have been over the last few weeks, which is basically the main reason we are starting to see the markets rally up a lot. So if we do come out around 25, we'll be quite bullish. If we come around to zero, obviously incredibly bullish. If we come around 50, it is going to crash the markets quite abruptly. Moving on guys, we can see the S&P and Dow Jones are our support. We can see the Dow Jones over here holding on to our 32,000 support like an absolute champion. Again, a massive support over here guys. If we do lose this level, we can be continuing down to around 31,000. Looking at the S&P 500, we did bounce from our major support zone, which was this diagonal support from our bear market resistance. This is our bear market resistance over here, our descending expanding wedge. We bounced from that level, retested 4,000, unable to break through. But again, this week will be the determining week of whether or not the S&P 500 is able to break through and rally to 4,080. Okay, where we'll meet another resistance, 
or if it's going to reject and con come down. Again, a lot of this is going to be decided by the FOMC meeting and the interest rate hike. Really quickly guys, interest rates play a massive role in determining asset prices, and we'll touch on this later on when we talk about the four year cycle. If interest rates rise, the overall systematic risk in the market massively worsens. And if the systematic risk in the market worsens, we generally see asset prices fall. You can refer back to this diagram over here. If systematic risk in the market decreases, we generally see the risk return on assets massively turn positive, and they do generally rise as money flows from the dollar into assets. So knowing that interest rates are one of the main determining factors of asset prices as a whole and overall asset movements in the economy. So if we do look at interest rates falling and potentially pivoting later, or sooner, we can see a potential front run of that and overall perceived risk in a market decrease and assets rise. And that is exactly what we have seen in the last 10 days. In the last 10 days, banks have fallen down. The Federal Reserve announced that they're going to be pivoting or at least printing money and they can't print money and increase rates at the same time. It would be contradictory and therefore the likelihood of a pivot has completely skyrocketed. And that is why we have seen that 85 or 80% 80 chance of a 50 basis point hike drop all the way down to 59% chance of a 25 and 41% chance of a zero. The narrative in the market over the last 10 days has basically done a complete 180. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into Bitcoin, guys. So much to talk about. Let's start off with the short term and then we'll go to the daily and then we'll talk about how the charts are looking and then we'll finish up on the four year cycle, we'll discuss what the four year cycle is and where the four year cycle is telling us the next bull run will actually start. Let's get into it. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss my favorite exchange, BitGet. If you're looking for a safe, honest, reliable and accurate exchange, look no further than BitGet. You can sign up by the link in the description to support the channel and get access to three exclusive perks. That being up to 5,005 US dollars in trading rewards, up to 15% discount on your trading fees and exclusive access to our Mega World promotion campaigns that we run every few months. Alongside that guys, BitGet is a non-KYC exchange, meaning you do not have to KYC, it is completely optional. BitGet also has a protection fund that secures user assets against external hacks and threats in the space. Alongside that guys, BitGet offers up to 125x leverage on futures with extensive amount of trading pairs and liquidity on the market. I highly recommend signing to BitGet. It is the exchange I've been using for over a year and a half now, including all of our members. If you're interested in signing up, trading there and supporting the channel, you can do so with the link in the description. Thanks for listening. So on the daily chart guys, we can see Bitcoin has of course rallied quite a decent amount and has come up to retest two particular levels I want to talk about. The first one is going to be this chart here. This is going to be our CME future chart for Bitcoin. As we can see, we can see quite a large gap in the futures right over here. Generally, prices do fill gaps. We saw our prior gap fill over here. This is our prior gap. We saw this fill on that retracement. Okay, we're pushing up. We could potentially be filling this gap. So we're looking at any sort of resistance between 27,400 and 28,900 to fill the current gap on the CME futures. And again, the weekly open will be quite impressive when it comes to that. It'll be quite, sorry, uh, foretelling when it comes to the next move for Bitcoin. Moving on to the daily chart, we can see if we applied that same range uh, onto our standard daily chart, we can see we have actually come up and retest that level. Now, if we ignore that and apply our current resistance range, which is 28 to 30,000, it does still say we have quite a little bit of movement room towards the upside before we do expect any sort of resistance and rejection. And again, the VRPV does suggest we'll be entering resistance from about 27,800 to about 27, uh, 29,000, which is going to be our main chunk of resistance in this 28 to $30,000 resistance zone. Currently, Bitcoin has broken toward the upside of this rising uh, resistance level, which is our rising wedge formation. Remember, we had this rising wedge formation over here. We broke towards the downside, we pushed up, and now we have broken toward the upside. So we are now looking at this uptrending support level as a potential bouncing point or if we do lose that, a potential trigger for a continuation back toward the downside within this range. So a really important time to be looking at the charts over here, guys, as if we do lose this local low, we could see a pullback back to 25K, but until then, we are definitely still an uptrend and the potential to retest this range or push higher into the CME gap is definitely possible. So, like I said, 
a lot does rest on the coming days for Bitcoin. It's quite an impressive time. Looking at the higher time frame chart, guys, we do have a few things I want to discuss. First and foremost is, of course, the resistance we're entering. So as we see, we do have this red bar here, which is of current resistance zone that we have detailed on the chart. It's at $28,000 to $30,000 level. According to the VRPV, guys, we are in that low volume range. The low volume range on the VRPV is between 252 and 29,000. As we just said before, the strongest resistance is sitting between 27,800 to 29,000, and the VRPV does reflect that 29,000 is going to be a main chunk or the greatest part, point of resistance within the resistance range. If we take this resistance range here, guys, this red box, and we draw a horizontal, within that resistance range, that 29,000 level is going to be the strongest point of horizontal resistance within that resistance range, okay? So we're looking for any sort of strong reactions, we're looking for liquidation wicks at that, or strong rejections from that to confirm a rejection from that range. So currently, Bitcoin did break above 25,200. Like we said, if we did break above that level, that would be our bullish trigger for a continuation upwards into our next range. And we did expect volume, volatility, and velocity of price action to speed up a lot as we enter that low volume range according to the VRPB. As you can see in the high time frame, guys, we do have a fair bit of resistance over here. We not only have the 28 to 30K resistance, but we also have the Gaussian channel midline resistance, which is sitting within that 28K level. Both of these points are points we should be looking for confluence on for possible re uh, reactions and rejections from going forward. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of our moving averages. So we go ahead and delete everything on this chart and bring up our 50, our 200 and 300, we can see our moving averages. So currently there is absolutely no doubt Bitcoin is looking good, right? There's no doubt that Bitcoin is looking great. We saw an amazing hammer candle guys on that weekly chart over here, a bullish engulfing candle print currently with 21 hours left on the weekly close. If we do close that weekly above the 200 moving average, that would be a really strong sign that the overall trend has flipped toward the upside, okay? Now, by no means are we in, a, in an aggressive uptrend. By no means are we in a strong uptrend, but breaking over the 200 and closing above the 200 will be the first step in developing a macro uptrend. We'll talk about that when we get to the four year cycle. As we can see already, we can see the price has already pushed over the 50 and it pushed over the 300 quite some time ago. If you have been following the channel for a very long time, you would have already known we bought Bitcoin all the way down over here. Our buys are at 18,000. 16,500. We also bought some at 20,000 and 19,200. Our current profits on those trades are quite large. We're seeing around 67% profit on our 16,500 purchase, 53% profit on our 18,000 purchase. But again, the main purchase we're taking down in this range under the 300 moving average. So looking at this chart, guys, we can see it is no doubt looking good, right? It is definitely looking good. And every single time we break over this 200, it generally does signify a shift in the trend. Now, what I would really, really like to see would be that 50 EMA pushing over the 200, right? The 50 EMA pushing over the 200 will signify increased volatility, increased velocity, and even more strength in this current uptrend. What I'd like to really pinpoint right now is although we have or probably going to close this candle above the 200, it does not signify we are entering a bull market. It simply signifies the start of a macro uptrend. Whether that macro uptrend will develop or not is something we'll have to talk about in just a moment. Okay, let's talk about the four year cycle then. So I've got a question today. When will the bull run start? How will we know it started? What point should we be looking for on the higher time frame for the bull run the trigger? And another really quick, good question is, what is the probability of the bull run not starting? What could cause a bull run to not start? So I guess we'll answer that first. So really quickly, guys, I think my hypothesis on what could cause a bull run to not start would be really nailed down to two things. Number one, intense government regulation, um, and this will be the main one, is if all governments collectively ban Bitcoin or made it incredibly difficult to access Bitcoin, that could definitely drag Bitcoin down enough. And number two, I would like to say that global economic events or global events have the power to influence cycles of asset prices. So the, the current statement or the current theory you should be going off is as long as money continues to be printed, we can expect asset prices to continue to rise. And that goes across the board of asset prices, whether it be financial assets such as Bitcoin, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, 
more stable assets, housing prices, whether it be gold, whatever kind of asset price you want to talk about, when money gets printed and money injects into your economy, that money does find it well find its way into assets. So as long as we start seeing money being printed again and interest rates drop, we can expect Bitcoin to eventually at some point enter a bull run. So for it to not enter a bull run, we would have to see the complete opposite of that. We'd have to see rates continue to rise and that would be contradictory to what the Fed is saying. So if interest rates continue to rise for an extended period of time, and the likelihood of that is very low, but if they do rise rates for a very long time, we already know the banks will completely go go under and the feds will not allow that so that's kind of like off the cards and number two again government regulations banning crypto and my counter argument to that is why would they ban crypto when crypto is a tax income source for the government why would the government shut off a potential income source uh for the sake they wouldn't right they wouldn't shut off ta uh, crypto as an income source and therefore they wouldn't ban cryptocurrency because they make so much money from capital gains tax from crypto it'd be stupid to shut it off and that's their mindset they don't want to stop crypto they want to regulate crypto they don't want to get rid of crypto they want to control crypto and control and deleting is completely two different things so i do think a next bull run is programmed for bitcoin insane for a very long time um in fact you've been watching my channel from the from the get-go we were very bearish at the top okay we predicted a retracement down okay remember our videos we predicted a retracement from that top point from that rejection point of 64,000 guys in november okay 14th of november we initially predicted a move towards a 200 moving average this is where we said okay this is a potential bounce point this will be looking for bottoms okay when we lost the 200 moving average we said 18,000 okay hit 18,000 and again that was kind of that bottom we took we took our first purchase on 18,000 we dribbled down slowly we ended up buying more of 16,000 and we're back over at massive profit but again guys for no bull run to occur i would have to expect those two things to occur and the probabilities of those two things again interest rates continuing to hike for an extended period of time would be very unlikely because it would destroy the banks destroy the dollar destroy the economy and number two again um banning of cryptocurrency on a global level i don't think it's going to occur because it'd be counterintuitive to the profit uh the the moral obligation that governments have to turn profit and that would be again unlikely so what is the probability of the bull run starting and when will it start so first and foremost let's take a look at the four-year cycle the four-year cycle is a date range of the entire cycle of bitcoin we can see the red zones are our bear markets the green zones are our bull markets and the gray zones are kind of these decision and kind of building up phases if we can see the date ranges we can see on average we have a 13 bar so it's a monthly chart 13 month bear market 12 month bear market 12 month bear market okay generally they range between 13 and 12 months the middle phase is between 16 to 17 months as you can see 16 months 17 months 17 months a question mark it could be 16 and again the bull runs generally last for 19 to 18 months now the way we have come to this number is we've used a particular indicator called Ichimo cloud and we've deleted everything on there except the baseline the baseline is this trend line we can see on the Ichimo cloud where every single time we break above it we enter a technical uptrend okay now we can see the monthly candle close right over here okay on that green line and again right over here the monthly candle close above the baseline HMO cloud signifies the start of a bull run okay the start of a bull run but there's another way we can indicate the start of a bull run and that is to use overall volume ranges and price ranges if we look at the yearly lows of prior cycles okay such as here the yearly low okay such as over here yearly low and again over here yearly low every single time we close a monthly candle above that level right over here again at that same point monthly candle close a little sooner in this instance over here and again it could be closing anywhere along this trend line we generally never close a monthly candle back down below it so very uh, very interesting and something to note if you want to get the safest entry on bitcoin according to historical data and price ranges looking for a monthly candle close above the yearly low of the prior bull run will confirm the best possible entry or should i say the best the, and safest entry you can get holding for the long term for the next cycle okay let's take a look at our percentage drawdown so how high could bitcoin go realistically and i guess you know where could bitcoin go so taking our date and and percentage range trend we take from the prior top okay to the bottom we saw a 85 percent pullback from our prior top to the bottom we saw a 82 percent pullback and again from the top over here to the bottom we saw a 77 percent pullback okay looking at our movements from our bottoms to the point of which we enter a bull run we can see from bottom 
two bull run, which again is going to be that green line. We saw a move of 219% from bottom to bull run. We saw a move of 215%. If we have to equate that to this scenario, we could see a potential move upwards of 215%, reaching around 50,000 by the 1st of April 2024. 1st of April 2024 is the expected start of the bull run, which could potentially last until the 1st of October 2025, as per the date range trend of the four year cycle from prior cycles, guys. So, if we have to guess when the bull run would really start, that would be the 1st of April 2024, so April 2024, and it would last until around October 2025, okay? If we want to take a look at the best possible entry for a higher time frame swing for Bitcoin, you'd be looking for two things. Number one, a monthly candle close above the baseline of the Ichimoku cloud, which is represented by this red line, and number two, a monthly candle close above the prior yearly low of the prior bull run. In this instance in 2016, it lined up very well with the Ichimoku cloud baseline. In this instance in 2017, 18, 19, again, it lined up perfectly with that level over here, but again, uh, sorry, it lined up over here on this breakout. And again, in 2023, it has not occurred yet. So definitely something to keep your eyes on and look forward to in the future. That is what we expect the bull run to occur. That is what we expect it to do and when it should trigger. We've talked about the possibility of a non-event for the bull run. And the non-event bull run is very, very unlikely. Like I said, as long as money continues to be printed, the probability of a bull run occurring is very high. So let's talk about the short term and then we'll finish up the video, guys. So... This chart right over here, I want to go ahead and dive into a little bit. So we have pushed up, we've reached a possible rejection zone, we've obviously retested that uptrending support level, let's talk about the technicals and let's talk about what we're looking like. So, currently Bitcoin is in an uptrend. It's clearly in an uptrend, not only do we have this uptrending trend line, okay, you can see I'm going to draw an arrow onto it so you can see it's uptrend, but we also have the price over our moving averages. But we are starting to see a little bit of weakness here, right? We are starting to see the price push underneath the smaller time frame moving averages and it's converging and compressing towards a 50 EMA. Again, this weakness is nothing to be too concerned about. It doesn't really mean too much as the overall trend, which is this rising trend, right? We are still very much in this rising trend. If we draw an upward, trend, upward trending line, we do have a possible rising wedge formation that we are developing. And again, a rising wedge formation into resistance is something we have to be quite concerned about. As the last time we saw a rising wedge into resistance, right, we saw a strong rejection. Zoom out, guys, zoom out. Let's take a look. The rising wedge right over here into resistance. This is our prior rising wedge. We saw that breakdown rejection. Now we're starting to see something of that sort on a smaller time frame, and therefore when the short trigger will execute will be a breakdown of this trend line. That is when we're looking for potential shorts. Until then, the uptrend is very still likely to occur. And again, this uptrend could take us anywhere between 28,000 to 28,400 as a high, potentially even a liquidation week above. So do keep your eyes on that. However, I would be expecting this current pattern to be the pattern that results in a pullback from 28 to 30,000 or 28 to 29,000 eventually if this uptrending support line breaks. So, at the moment, uptrend is still intact, expect the price to go higher, but again, if we do lose this support line, this uptrending support, we can expect a breakdown. Where can the breakdown take us? Look at your prior levels, look at your volume levels. These gaps in the VRPVs will indicate as targets. These strong area supports as well. We're looking at 26,000, 26,400, 25,500, 25,200 range, and finally, 24,500 as this local low over here. Now, like we said many, many times already, guys, we do not expect these pullbacks to be bearish. Every single pullback that occurs within this particular range, we're going to show it. Every single pullback, like we've been saying for months now, that occurs within this range, this middle range, this healthy decision range, should be considered a healthy correction. We've been saying it for a very long time, okay? So keep that in mind, guys. We are over the major, major support. We are in the bullish territory. Every pullback should be considered a healthy pullback unless it drops back below the 25.2k level. 
I'm gonna leave the video there. I hope today's video was informative and educational. I didn't wanna to get too much into the short term trading today as the four year cycle did take up a lot of video. And again, it is the weekend, so we don't have too much price action. But in tomorrow's video, we'll discuss when the market opens, a lot more detail about the short term and what we expect to occur over the week. But I hope you found today's video informative and I hope you found the four year cycle quite entertaining. If you've got any questions or you have any thoughts, leave them down below. Of course, I can't cover everything in every video. So there's a lot do I do miss, but I do make sure I cover everything over a few videos. So go ahead and join the Crypto Academy, guys, if you haven't already. This is a course we've developed, a 10-unit course. We teach you everything on market candlesticks, patterns, technical indicators, and so much more. We teach you how to trade, how to look for trades, and how to manage your trades as well. Go ahead and contact us over here for more information. I'll see you guys tomorrow.